These were all the discussions, uh, so I would like to invite all the speakers, um, well, to the podium, I would always almost say, but that's a bit uh, exaggerating. Yeah, yeah. And now the floor is open to your to all your questions. So, who can I? No questions. Ah, Peter. Hello, Bart. Uh, we're colleagues. Uh, I have a question for Martina. At first, thank you for your uh, presentation. Uh, I was wondering if you could say anything about the safety feeling of people when they are in a neighborhood where screens are. Yes, so we did a study on that as well this year. Um, there is a, a LED screen in a tunnel in uh, the southeast of uh, Amsterdam, and they positioned the screen there uh, because they thought that it might give people uh, a better feeling of, uh, of safety. Um, we, we found that if... Um, uh, yeah. If, if, if it is light, it helps. Mm -hmm. We don't know yet if it's really the screen that, that does it. So the, the screen that is there uh, has sensors in it, and uh, when somebody passes, then uh, uh, yeah, light patterns, colored pa patterns follow the person. And right now we are, uh, uh, somebody is making new content with uh, different kinds of uh, patterns to see if, if that helps, because uh, right now the pattern follows the person, so the person doesn't really see uh, what is happening. But um, yeah, it, it's, it's complicated, but we are, are doing research on it uh, uh, at the moment. Any more questions? No more? Ah. Yeah. I don't know if it's the right question. Yes, my name is Pier Giorgio working at the European Commission Joint Research Centre. Uh, you are probably aware about uh, the INSPIRE directive, the INSPIRE initiative for having harmonised uh, geographical information all over the Europe. So in the future years, uh, European member states uh, have to harmonise the, the, their own uh, geodata. Uh, my question is, how important is for geodesign topics uh, uh, to uh, to, to, to help to, to base uh, um, to, to, to use harmonized data so how important is the harmonization of uh, geographical information for geodesign matters any specific person no all of them okay <laughs> <laughs> who wants to take the challenge i th i think this uh, arm harmonization is of main importance um, i can only speak for the data set I'm involved in, uh, looking for instance as legal ownership data. Uh, currently also in Europe we have all kinds of initiatives related to INSPIRE as well uh, on, on, on harmonization like for instance the ULIS initiative. This means that we are organizing ourselves a geo portal uh, by which if we want to sell or to buy a house in which country we want and that we are facing more or less th the same data set uh, in, in, in each country. This is just an example of, of the Im importance of harmonized data sets to support the idea of the Commission for free traveling of people and goods and, and, and investments. Anybody else? One question? Well, then I have a question, <laughs> because we, um, it's my impression that most of your presentations were about modeling, modeling um, the um, public spaces, modeling spaces. And I'm very much interested, Christoph, what could be the additional value of gaming uh, instead of modeling? So you have modeling and you've got, you've got gaming, I guess. I'm, I'm in this gaming thing, you know? <laughs> so uh, maybe you could elaborate a bit on that. I, yeah, very briefly, um, of course there's crowdsourced data and there, there's a whole collection of games addressing the issue of collecting geodata 
from the environment. So, so I, I try to point out that I think uh, the real strength of games is where, when it comes to subjective data. Yeah. And you, you have to kind of design the games, first to provide motivation, and secondly to uh, kind of get a quality insurance into this process of, of collecting crowdsourced data. So there, there are a number of projects uh, on, on noise mapping, on, on, on other types, types, types of map. I think this is one important aspect, uh, data collection. Uh, when it comes to modeling, I think every game is a kind of model and well, it's at least it is a semantic addition on top of the reality. Whether it's a model, not necessarily. But you can create very virtual worlds, which are fantasy worlds. Yeah. Yeah, for me, um, also after discussion, what we had also in, in Switzerland with all these decision makers, um, so last week was this uh, big Swiss Energy and uh, Climate Summit. And um, there was a strong um, link also how to deal with these uncertainties in in, this, um, in city planning and also what you um, can do if you don't have all this data about uh, planning all the data um, for all these different uh, materials for, for buildings or transport data, but al already to do some first decisions. So I think um, this link that you have like um, on one side, you have uh, some models with a lot of information in the end, but in, in the other hand, you maybe you, you have uh, tools which uh, provide like a, a nice um, a base also to deal with these uncertainties and also to to um, combine uh, with the different fields together. So, and this is also yeah, it's um, so f like a game, but uh, I think. Um, also for decision makers is um, more serious, but also games could be serious. <laughs> <So> serious games. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, all of you, uh, for these uh, presentations. I learned a lot. I still don't know what my favorite game is, but that's for further discussions. I would like to thank the audience for um, being present here. The program does not stop here. Um, there are drinks. Um, um, uh, in the auditorium, um, Willie Smith is going to uh, have a presentation about his uh, orangutans uh, project uh, in Indonesia. Uh, there is dinner, there is uh, um, um, a band is going to play some nice music, so there is still reason to stay here and uh, I hope to see you tomorrow as well. Okay, thank you very much.